Welcome to the fourth and final series of four videos that are dealing with what you might not know about thermally modified wood. My name is Robert Lennon. I'm one of the principal owners of Thermal Wood Canada and welcome to this session today. What I want to talk about today and we've talked about over the last three sessions was basically on the first one we talked about the theory of thermal modification, what it's all about and what the, uh, the process uh, does to the wood. The second one was dealing with all the different applications that we can have. And the final one dealt with uh, siding. Now we're going to go to the decking uh, site. So please allow me to share my slides here. So in the first uh, session, as we said, we talked about theory. I want to do a quick recap. So the big things to talk about here is the fact of structural stability. The wood is densified. It does not take any humidity from the air, and we have all kinds of uh, research to be able to prove that. There's a slight reduction in bending strength by about 10%. So if you're going to use this as a structural member, you need to take that into consideration into your design calculations. It also has an improved resistance to decay because you've taken all the sugars and the organic properties out of the wood or converted them into some other element inside the, uh, the wood chemically. That in turn also doesn't allow fungus to grow because there's nothing for it to eat. The wood has been petrified. The final element is its resistance to insects and insects need food to be able to uh, survive just like the fungus and there's no food left in the wood. The process only uses heat and steam, therefore environmentally friendly. There's absolutely no chemicals added into this process. And finally, the appearance of the wood. As you go higher in temperature, the color gets darker and it's a, a consistent color through and through the wood. So you can take a two inch thick piece of wood, slice it and dice it and it'll be the same color through and through. So for people that are manufacturing things and they're trying to mold this into something else, are they gouging big chunks out of the, uh, out of the wood for their design? the color will still be the same on the underside. And that's something important to take into uh, to consideration. The opportunities for these products are endless and they're all over the world. We also, it's a green product. So anybody that's looking for green products for various applications can look at thermally modified wood to do it and do not have to be cutting down trees from the rainforest to get that exotic look that they're looking for. So you're taking wood that's actually white and you're making it dark and it's popping the grains out of the wood. The other thing to take into consideration is that this wood is very stable and works in very, very high humid areas. So we've uh, actually been involved in projects where this wood has been placed as flooring inside hot yoga rooms that are running at about 75, 85% relative humidity. The last element you need to consider through this thing is that this wood comes from well-managed forest and comes from forests in North America and we take our wood from Canada and from the United States to be able to run through the process. As I mentioned, today it's all about decking and we're going to talk a lot about the fastening systems for the decking. Decking boards are decking boards. You can get them in ash, you can get them in pine. They're the best performers. We've tried other species like maple and birch. And what happens with maple and birch, it works very well as a siding product. If you're listening, have listened into the uh, module that we did prior to this, it was talking about siding. Works very, very well, performs nicely. It's a flat grain wood, it looks good. But on a horizontal decking surface, it does not work very well. It, you get a lot of surface checking within a short period of time. Whereas uh, ash has proven itself over and over again, over years of experience that we've gained with this in all kinds of different temperatures from plus 30 to minus 40, and the wood still performs very, very well. And that's white ash that's been thermally modified for a uh, exterior application. Now for the fastening system, there's a number of ways to fasten the decking down. You can use the old fashioned way, pre-drill and uh, face drill it and then plug it if you want or leave the screws there, it doesn't make any difference. The other way is, is that you can actually, and we've done this before, is we uh, put a groove on each side of the, uh, the board and you put in a T-clip or an EPA clip 
or any kind of side clips whatsoever that can be screwed down in that space that's between the board. The other option is the snap to it uh, section is where you basically snap the deck down onto these plastic clips. And the plastic clips that we have come in a uh, strip that's 15 inches long and you actually screw those into the uh, uh, joist and then place your boards over the top, snap them into place. It keeps an even spacing in between. The only problem with that, if it is a problem, is that we are constricted with the width of the boards that need to be manufactured at four and three quarter inches wide. If you want a wider inch board, I'll show you some videos in a second. They use the same clipping system and uh, it allows you to go with a, a wider or a narrower board if you want to, because the clips can be adjusted through there. So speaking of that, let's go to this, uh, to these videos. And I'm gonna show you a series of four uh, videos. The first one will be showing a rail system with adjustable clips that allows you to also take the boards off after you put them down. The second one will be looking at the same kind of rail system, but you have a little bit thicker rail that you actually put on a bunch of pillars. So if you're putting it into an uh, covering over an uneven deck or going on a surface that's uneven, you can have these pillars that you actually, or pedestals that you actually can install at different levels inside your deck. The other one that the video that I'll show here will be touching on the uh, clipping system that we have now and that you have to screw in each clip. And finally, it'll be showing uh, someone installing a deck um, at two different levels and how quick that, that can be done. That's the, the uh, definition of using these rails. So in this video, we are showing a flat rail system. Let me get this a little bit bigger for you. And in this flat rail system, there's an aluminum rail. They put a rubber adhesive on the back side. The clips are already installed. You go and you set them at the width that you want to, at 16 inches apart, lay the decking boards down, and snap them right into place. Then you can go and finish the ends of the, uh, the decking boards to be able to uh, close that all in. So that's one way that can, Brad can show that uh, being used. The second one is using the pedestal system for the clips. Now the rails are a little bit bigger, the pedestals actually screw into the back side of those rails. Then when you're installing them, you put them down. The back side here, let me stop this for a second. Now, you've got all of these sections here that are on the, uh, the rails and the pedestals are there. I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. So we have the pedestals that are adjustable on underneath both. And here, this is a track that goes underneath and snaps in underneath this all rail system that holds it all together. So you won't have any tipping of this uh, rail system in any way, shape, or form. Once that's done, then you can resume and start putting the decking boards back in place. As you can see, they adjusted. Everything is snapped back into, uh, into place in this particular situation. Now, this is actually our, uh, uh, the clipping system that's actually manufactured here in Canada, where it's the little narrow plastic strips and uh, the clips are actually tied together. And what you end up doing, they're 15 inches in, in length. There's a male and female end, so you just run them along the top of your joist and screw them in. So you can watch here as they're being screwed in. And uh, so each one of these screws is actually screwed in. Once they're all in, then you start placing the boards like you do in everything else. The key here is to make sure that they're all aligned and make sure that uh, your boards are all uh, tied together. Uh, the spacing is the same and you simply push it down into place. And the, as you can see from the board that just got put in and the one that we're gonna put in right now, you just line them all up, push them all in and snap right into place. Finally, we're looking at a deck here that has two different levels. So this young man takes the, uh, this is using the rails. He cuts them with a saw, makes them for length, puts the rubber mat and sticky mat on the back side of them, lays them down on the floor, measuring them against the side to make sure that they're evenly spaced 
at 16 inch centers. And once he's got them all into place, then he brings in this first board. He basically puts it over the top, snaps it into place so nothing moves, and then finalizes that whole width. So, and then continues on doing it. In this particular case, he's got to shorten along, shorten along, and he alternates them so as he goes through to give it a pattern. You can also snap it in place as he just did with just walking on the boards. So to finish that off, snapping them all into place with his feet this time. And then the next one, what he's showing is that he's putting on, on a small little joist. He's putting these uh, uh, pillars in underneath the, uh, the deck, putting them all in place. And then he puts in his joist that he's already lined up the rail on top on top of them and snaps them into place, levels them off like we did in the previous uh, uh, video, make sure that they're all at the right uh, spacing, and then again, snaps them all into place. With the end of the joist that he has, it makes it easy to be able to screw in the front end and cover that end and make it look like a step. And then again, he's using both his feet to be able to snap them all down in place. And uh, voila, now we have a beautiful deck that got put down in a very short period of time with very little work, the clips were already installed, and this is where you have an opportunity to really speed up the process and to end up having a beautiful deck. So we talked about the kind of, uh, of decking boards and all of them can be installed the same way. You can have uh, pine for decking, which is a traditional pine cedar, but now you're taking Eastern pine, you're thermally modifying it. So it's getting the characteristics of having the Western red cedar and, and uh, those products out there. Uh, then on the top side here, you have an ash deck. And then this particular boards uh, are all snapped into place again. There's some shorter ones, some longer ones. So you can actually uh, uh, make some patterns as you're going through. You can uh, put them in at all kinds of, uh, of different levels. You can actually have the decking coated because if you don't coat it, remember this is thermally modified. So all your inherent oils that were preventing uh, this wood to go gray um, and putting it going gray, it would go gray over a longer period of time. Now those oils have been removed, causing the wood to go gray at a very shortly. Like you would have this deck installed in the sun in the summertime, it'd go gray in the period of two, two and a half months. So if you want to keep that color, you need to put UV protection on it. And especially on decking, you need a product that's oil-based that actually soaks into the wood. We use Qtech. It's a product that was developed in, uh, in New Zealand. It's a synthetic oil base. It soaks into your wood, and then the pigments lie on the, uh, on the top. Um, just showing you a number of different decks out there with uh, uh, this particular one the gentleman made and, and put the picture frame around the outside so that it conceals all the clips and nobody sees them. And he also used the same decking boards for making the stairs and uh, use a different type of product to make the risers. The uh, uh, number of different decks here that uh, you, know, you can put in, you can cut them to fit around pillars, around anything that you end up doing. In this particular case, the customer used it for the stairs, used it for the decking, and then he also made it for these uh, uh, flower boxes here that, uh, that he has. Uh, the other element is that uh, you can use this in a very wet uh, area. So for docks, you put the clips down, you snap them all into place, and then using it for a pine deck, as we mentioned a while ago, giving you that uh, aspect too that you can use it in. And then uh, in this particular case, this is an oak deck, and this was also uh, coated. And so oak, ash are almost the same uh, kind of grain and work very well. In this particular case, the gentleman used the, uh, the project uh, the, and uh, he put paraffin on top. Uh, so another product that used. This was the deck that we showed at the beginning that actually uh, had no coating on it. So they were gonna allow things to go gray. And they finished it in a different uh, way. And finally, you can also get this deck brushed. So what we do is we put it in the brushing machine to give it a little bit more of a, a rough surface, so anti-skid. So if that's something that's important for you to consider in your deck, that's something you can do and something that could be ordered. So this is the end of all our sessions. If you are a 
outstanding member of any of the architectural associations in Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, or Prince Edward Island, please contact us. Let us know that you've watched this. Send us an email. We'll send you a uh, small little questionnaire that you got to fill out. And it also shows your attendance that you've watched all four of these sessions. Send it back to us. And then in turn, what we will do is we will make sure that you get accredited for your points. I want to thank you very much for listening into these sessions, uh, for going through them. We will continue on giving various other sessions as we go through the year. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Give us some feedback. If you have any questions, anything that we didn't cover in this, please contact us and we will be glad to be able to help you.